I am excited about today's episode. I have invited Shalee Sanchez back this week. So welcome. Thank you for coming again. I am so excited to be here again. Thank you. I'm so glad. Um, This week, we're going to talk about the compassion of Jesus. Uh, Shalee and I really feel like it's important that you understand how much Jesus loves you, the type of compassion that he has for you, and the best way to do that is to look at some stories in the Bible that show his compassion. Uh, One of the other things we're going to talk about is how do we also then get that compassion to show others, because sometimes... Um, I don't know about you, but it's harder than it seems. You know, some days it's easy and some days it can be uh, fairly difficult. So we want to talk about that today. So let's start with talking about just really the compassion of Jesus. And I know there's so many stories in the Bible, but is there one in particular that kind of resonates with you that shows Jesus's compassion? Yes, actually, Cheryl, there is one that really stood out to me that I am excited to talk about today, and I'm excited to talk about the compassion of Jesus because it's so transformative, and in the story that I'm going to talk about, I think that it can be seen so vividly. So in the Bible, there are so many stories about Jesus interacting with people, and a lot of times it's in a multitude, like there's a huge crowd. And then there's moments where it's so personal and the interaction is very specific and individual for one person. And in the story that I am talking about right now, it is in the setting where there's a crowd, there's people, it's a public place. But then there's this woman who shows up and she has been carrying the burden of this disease for 18 years Mm -hmm. that has caused her to be hunched over. So if you can just like put yourself in a physical position right now and think about what that would feel like to just live hunched over, how that would affect you emotionally and mentally and socially to live that way for 18 years. Mm. And then she walks into this place. And what I love about the compassion of Jesus is how spontaneous it is. Yes. So she walks in and I wonder if there was any expectation on her part of what was about to happen. Right. But she is in this public place and Jesus heals her. I'm not going to tell you the details of it. And this is why. (laughs) Because... When he heals people, he uses so many different and very uh, unique ways to do that. And those are specific because it really impacted that person's life. Mm -hmm. So if you want to read the story and get the details of it, DM me and I will be glad to share the story with you so that you can read it on your own and find out the specifics about how Jesus healed this woman. And when he did that, it says that she was able to stand straight up. Like, I just, I think about the impact that would have had for her self-esteem, the impact that it would have had for her mentally, the impact that it would have had for her physically to be able to stand up after 18 years of being hunched over. And then what is so incredible about the compassion of Jesus is that it is bold yeah. He never was worried about what everybody else was going to think. Right. When he was compassionate towards a person, people responded in different ways. And in this story, the people responded negatively. Wow. It was the leader in the synagogue was like, what are you doing? You cannot do that here. And he starts just <sighs> completely going against what Jesus just did. Right. Um, And so for me, that is one of the just really impactful things about Jesus's compassion is how Mm -hmm. bold it was because it, he didn't worry about how other people were going to respond in that moment. Another thing that really stands out to me is that in his compassion, he brings, he lifts people up. He uh, restores yes. their dignity. Right. 
And so he enters into this intensely, I mean, very intensely vulnerable moment with this woman where she's in a public place and could be embarrassed right. and shamed by the leader of the synagogue mm-hmm. for what just happened. And he enters into that moment with her and protects her oh, and keeps wow. her safe and sustains her worth and her dignity and her value. Right. And that to me is what compassion, true compassion yeah. really does. And that's what Jesus wants to do for you. Right. That's what he's done in our experiences yes. with Jesus's compassion. And he wants to restore your value and dignity and worth wow. in the compassion that he has for you. It's transformative in that way. Yeah. And it's so, it's like you said, it was so much about her. So there's so much going on. And yet Jesus, because of his great love for us, he zeroes in on one person and he just says, today, I'm going to minister to you today. I'm going to heal you. I'm going to get in trouble. It's going to cause problems, but I don't care. Right? right. I mean, it's so much. I'm getting the chills. Yes. He, he loves her so much. Yes. And I think even with, you said something about socially, it matters mm-hmm. that Jesus, he cares about socially. Yes. You know, I think sometimes we want to spiritualize everything, but to be hunched over, that's a social problem. There's right. a lot of things you can't enter into or be a part of. And yet he, he even cares about that, about her being a part of a community in a healthy way. And yes. he heals her even to the detriment of himself or whatever is going on at the time with the leaders. And like you said, and he raises her up and say, says, you matter. You know, yes. maybe you don't have leprosy, but I see you and this is still a really hard thing. And I care about your hard things, you know? Right. Yes. That's so beautiful. Yes. I love that. What you just said, you matter because that's, really the message right. that his compassion has for each of us is you matter. And he wants you to know that you matter to yes. him. Oh, that's so good. What a, yeah, that's a great story. I feel like I'm going to want to go back and reread it and kind of get all the details about it because it is, um, you know, there's always, there's so many stories. I think we can gloss over them at times, but, um, that's a great one. So the story I wanted to talk about is in, uh, the new Testament. So John eight, right. That's where Jesus is. Um, and it's about the woman who gets caught in the sin of adultery. But the thing about this, um, whole story is that the Bible says that they wanted to trap Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, and Jesus is like, at the temple courts. He's not like out by the sea. He's in the temple courts. So they're wanting to make a spectacle of this incident. So they find this woman who um, was sleeping with somebody. You don't know the details. They bring her in and they say, should we stone her or not? Mm -hmm. Right? So this is, they're humiliating her. They're also bringing her closer to their synagogue as Jesus's answer to whether uh, they should condemn this woman or not, he leans down into the ground and starts just writing on the dirt with his finger, right? And so um, we're not sure exactly what he said, but he did tell the people in the group, let any one of you who was without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And then he stooped back down and wrote on the ground. And at this, those who heard begin to go away until only Jesus was left with this woman. And Jesus straightens up and says, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? Mm -hmm. And she says, No one, sir. And then Jesus replies, Neither do I condemn you. Go now and leave a life of sin. So I think what's so beautiful is that not only did he just not um, bring so much condemnation on an obvious sin, he still tells her to go and sin no more, right? There's mercy there, but there's so much compassion for him to realize, like, I know what's going on. I see that these men have dragged you into the circle, you know, part of some kind of plan. And yet when I say who else doesn't have sin, they slowly begin leaving. 
Mm-hmm. You know, is this reminder that you are not the only one that has problems or is dealing with some kind of sin. These men who are already, you know, telling everybody they're holier than thou, they also have their own sin. What, what you're sharing to me is really highlighting something that's so important in the fact that our enemy is the one who wants to destroy. And right. so in these kind of moments in our life, he uses shame and he uses isolation and he wants us to think, oh, you're the only one who's ever done this. Right. And that is what Jesus in his compassion is really coming into that and speaking on that specifically for this woman. Right. No, you're not the only one. Yes. And no, this doesn't isolate you. You still are a woman with value. You still have an identity that has not been destroyed. Right. Yes. Yeah. Because I think that compassion, real compassion wants to rehabilitate. It doesn't want to just convict you and say, you are wrong and you did this thing, right? Out of the love that Jesus has for her. Um, he, he wants something better for her, just like he wants something better for you. And so sometimes we do feel condi- convicted, but the Lord never brings shame around that or condemnation, right? The, the word says there's no condemnation in Christ, but he may want you to make a change because he knows it's going to be better for you. And so I think that really is true compassion, right? If you, if you don't address somebody's issue, how much do you really care about them? It's almost like our children, right? We, we discipline them or we bring things up, not just so that they're, you know, say they're doing something wrong. We, we love them and we want better for them. We want them to be, live their very best life, right? Um, and so we do have to sometimes bring up things and convict them of a bad habit so that they can be better, right? This rehabilitation that we have, but I think that comes from a spirit of compassion and definitely not condemnation. Yes, and as his compassion is empowering transformation and life change, it reminds me of a story actually that is a real life story, like from this past week, right. not in my own life. Uh, a colleague was sharing this uh, with me and talking about how there are moments in people's lives where for a variety of reasons, they began to live not even aware of what they're living in. Yes. And they are not able to have the lights on in their house. So they live in this filth and a place that just has a really huge mess. Right. And that stepping into that place with compassion and helping that person to be able to see is like turning on the light and saying, Mm. look at what's here. Let's get rid of this. Yes. Um, Because you'll be in a much better place. Right. And unless you get rid of all of the mess and the junk and everything that is, you know, causing all of this chaos, then you're not going to really be able to enjoy the newness of what can come. Right. And, and I think too, like we flip on the light, we we feel instant shame, right? If there's like all of this junk everywhere, you're just like, oh my gosh, I didn't know it was that bad. Mm-hmm. Right. But compassion says, I'm here with you. Yes. I'm going to help you clean this up. Yes. Right? I have, there's better thing. There's a better way to live. Right. So let's work on it. So it is hard, right? Mm-hmm. We don't want to deny that it's a mess, but, but let's figure it out and let's work on it together. Right. Yeah. I love that. Um, so let's talk about why Jesus has compassion. Um, the, one of the things I realized is that throughout the Bible, right, it shows that he's always giving people, he's ministering to people or he's healing them. He's working a lot, right? He's ministering to others and, um, he does have compassion, but I believe that, you know, at, at night it says he would go away by himself 
and he would pray. Mm -hmm. And so he would get filled back up from the Lord. Otherwise, he would be constantly just emptying himself, right? He would have nothing to give. But he makes it a priority, no matter what, to go off with the Lord and to pray with him and to get rejuvenated, not just so that he can do something tomorrow, right? But because he loves the Lord and knows that God is his source and they have an intimate relationship, he wants to spend time with God And through that, through the overflow of his intimacy, really is where I believe that Jesus is compassion, where he has the ability to have compassion on so many others. Absolutely. Yeah. And in my own life, the compassion of Jesus that I've experienced personally has come through other people, and that has motivated me to want to share that. Yeah. And... He is the example, the one that we can imitate as we see his compassion at work and as we experience his compassion ourselves. That really is what compels us then to be open to opportunities where we can be compassionate as well. Yeah, I like that. I think, you know, we just, I just keep seeing, um, remembering just the one, you know, I think instead of like you're on the way to work and there's so much to do, but if we could just slow down and remember just the people in front of us, I think there's probably more compassion uh, to give out than we realize. You know, maybe it's just the Starbucks line, Mm -hmm. but I think there's a lot of opportunity to be compassionate. And for me, I'm probably going to miss it because I'm busy or because I have so much, you know, I'm just going to do the next thing. Um, so I think my hope is that I'm going to slow down some and look for opportunities to be compassionate to others, because we know in our world today, uh, we really could use a lot of compassion. I would say on all fronts. I mean, even on social media where people say things, you know, and you have the opportunity to just scroll on by and right, instead of correcting or, or making such a big fuss, but, um, Yeah, I think I'm going to try to do that is try to be just to be a little more aware of just the one in front of me or the one around me to uh, show compassion. Yeah, I think that there are so many spontaneous moments that come up throughout our day and they can be in different places and with different people and there are opportunities for us to engage and really join with Jesus in sharing compassion to that person in that particular moment. But also I want you to know if you're watching this and you're thinking, I don't know what his compassion is like. I don't think I've ever experienced his compassion. Then my prayer for you today is that you would experience his compassion, the compassion of Jesus in a real way that is tangible to you, that you can say, wow, yes, that was his compassion in that moment for me. And that you'll be able to grow from that and then be able to have an opportunity to share it because that's when it really comes full circle Mm -hmm. for us. When we experience it, but then also when we, with him, get to share that with someone else, it just brings this whole new level of being able to know how powerful that can be for someone. Yeah. I love that. And I think too, there's been moments in my life where I knew I needed to have compassion for somebody and I just didn't have it, Mm -hmm. you know, especially people that have wronged you or hurt you. Um, there was a time, there was such a difficult person in my life and I just thought I am out of compassion, you know, but what I had to do was go to the Lord and say, I have no more love for this person. Like, I, you know, you just got to be honest. And I felt like, Lord, you've got to give me love and compassion for them because I know that's what's needed. I know that's what's best. Mm -hmm. But me within myself, I just don't have it. Mm -hmm. And honestly, the Lord was so gracious 
to just, I mean, there's so much mercy, right, with our Lord. And when we go to him and we ask him, and he did, he just poured that, what I didn't have and what I couldn't even muster up, you know, he poured that into me so that I then could have compassion on this very specific person that I was really struggling with. And um, when he does that, I think it's so eye-opening, right, because I realize, um, how, how good he is that he would answer that prayer and how faithful he is, but just how powerful he is that he really could give me something right. that I just didn't have, you know, cause I think, I think I always believe I can figure it out somehow. I had nothing. I was at zero, you know, and God was so good to, to say, I hear you and I will, I will give you the grace that you need to deal with that person in a healthy way. So just a reminder that just go to the Lord and ask him. Mm -hmm. And because we all have difficult people in our life or people that have hurt us or people that are hard to deal with and ask him for grace and compassion for those people. And he will give it to you and ask him, I need to experience your compassion, Lord, or maybe open up my eyes where you've already gave me compassion. And Mm -hmm. I just didn't know that it was you. Cause I think that's a lot of it and ask him just to, you know, illuminate what those things were. And I believe that he wants to do that for you and just show you that he has been compassionate with you. Maybe even when you didn't realize it. Father, we thank you so much for the compassion that is so evident in your character and for the way that you are giving opportunities for all of us to experience your compassion and to share your compassion. And I pray that today, as we become more aware of what your compassion can do in our own lives, that we would also be eager and willing in whatever moment that you give us the opportunity to share that compassion with another person in the way that you show your compassion to us in a way that really gives value and worth and dignity Mm, to that person. And we trust that by your spirit, that is possible. And we thank you that because of Jesus, we can ask for that. And we pray in his name. Amen. Thank you. Mm